Okay. All right, so we're back with another episode of Biz Minds, and today on the pod we have Carlos Garcia, owner of Versa Gym and Financially Fit Coaches. Thank you so much for joining us today, Carlos. Yeah, appreciate you guys having me on. I mean, I'm always uh, ready to talk business and you know meet like-minded individuals that are trying to provide value with with these podcasts. So thank you so much for having me on. Of course, man. So let's get right into it. Tell us how you got started in the fitness industry and how that led you to opening up Versa Gym. Yeah. Ooh, the fitness industry. We're taking it way back. <laughs> you know, um, I think to understand how I got into, I think to understand how I got into the fitness industry, you got to take it all the way back to like where I was born. You know, I was born into communism. I was born in Cuba. And for me, you know, growing up, you know, we moved here when I was three years old. So I saw my parents just, you know, kind of go through the struggles of, you know, that lower middle class, just, you know, blue collar, just always, you know, my dad was in construction. My mom worked in shipping departments. And I realized that no matter how hard they worked, they weren't necessarily moving forward in life at the rate that they wanted to. And I quickly realized that hard work wasn't the end all. There was something else missing in the equation. And I took a passion that I had, which was sports and fitness. You know, um, I was a multiple sport athlete in high school, ended up playing uh, football up in Connecticut after high school as well on scholarship. And I just had just a, a patience and a passion for helping people achieve their fitness goals. Uh, primarily weight loss. And so, you know, I just had the, the blessing, man, that people were just drawn to me, asking me for, you know, uh, advice on how to achieve their fitness results. So it really came very organically how I started my fitness business. And, you know, I worked at, at the YMCA in high school and people were asking me for advice. And I was like, I'm not a trainer. That's a trainer over there. It's like, no, no, no. I want, I want to know what you do, you know? And so it just came very organically to me. I had people in high school already, I was a senior, you know, and uh, I had people, I had no certification. I had people just asking me like, Hey, you know, would you be willing to train me like 150 bucks, you know, train me two, three hours a week. And I used to work with my dad 10 hours a day, you know, helping him lay tile, mm -hmm. you know, I make a hundred bucks in 10 hours. And this woman's about to pay me $150, you know, for two or three hours of my time. I was completely, you know, mind blown. Right. Um, so I started learning the business side of it. Um, I was an independent contractor at an anytime fitness after my football career was over. Um, I was doing really well. I had a lot of people asking me to come to their home to train them just more efficient for their time, whether I train them in their driveway, in their house, or I train them at, at the gym in their community. Right. Um, and it worked out really well. Um, right before COVID, um, I saw this company that was building trailers for the military. Uh, and these trailers were mobile gyms. I remember I'm like, man, that'd be great to run like a at home personal training service, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, yeah, it just came to be where right during that COVID time, you know, I reached out to this company and I asked them, I said, Hey, you know, would you be willing to make one for commercial use? They're like, eh, give me a second. I'm going to yeah, put you on hold. Give me one second. Mm -hmm. I was like, there's no way they're going to sell me one of these answer me, you know, I mean, they're making this for the military, you know, they're shipping them overseas or, you know, all this, you know, soldiers are working out with them everywhere. Right. And, uh, they answer the phone. They're like, yeah, I can make you, we can make a commercial, you know, whatever you need, you know, your colors, your logo, everything. I was like, Oh, perfect. What's yeah. the cost? All right. Excellent. And yeah. I just ordered the first one. I remember looking at the TV too, during that time. And I think like COVID at the time was like in China. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't have any reported cases yet in America. And I was like, man, that's BS. That's never going to affect this. I literally said that I was sitting down like eating sushi with my wife, you know, who at the time was just my girlfriend. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. Next thing you know, everything shut down. The anytime fitness that I'm working at is shut down. Yeah. I'm like, well, I got to make a living. I'm self-employed. And now, you know, I'm living with my fiance who, you know, at the time has a four year old son. You know, so I just took on a lot more responsibility, you know? Um, so I was like, okay, let's really do this thing. And so we ordered the, the first, uh, Versa gym, the first mobile trailer and never looked back since then. You, you ordered it prior to COVID. Yeah. So literally 
COVID was not in America yet when we ordered it, but it okay. took us such a long time to get the first one mm-hmm. because there was like, you know, uh, supply chain issues. Do you remember that? Yeah. Remember when you called McDonald's, ah, supply chain. Yeah. yeah. It's, you can't call anyone during COVID. Right. Everyone's got an issue, which I, I understand, right? Some of it was BS. But yeah. How long, how long did it take to get it, to receive it? It was like six months. Six for months? The, for the first one. We're now, I mean, they can deliver them in eight weeks. Yeah. Oh, wow. You know, and they're wow. much bigger units as well. And how old were you at the time? I was 23. 23? 23. Okay. Yeah. And when you received it, did you? was it an easy transition? Because uh, you received it during the COVID time. Was it easy to transition from what you were doing or take your clientele into that personal training? Yeah, I think that... Or not, not personal training, but, you know, at home type of training. Yeah, I think that because I already had people asking me to come to their house and mm-hmm. gyms were closed, it was a much easier transition into that business. And then you also have people that were just genuinely concerned for their well-being mm-hmm. and didn't want to return to the gym. So it really opened up. Uh, and, of course, Naples is such an amazing market, you know, where we really... I mean, I tripled my personal training income from Anytime Fitness to, you know, Versa Gym in the first year. Wow. You know? So that for me was was huge, and I was also a lot more focused you right. know, as well because now you have, you have your own business. Um, and the cool thing with Versa is like you don't have overhead, like you don't have to pay seven, eight grand, six grand a month uh, in a lease payment. You don't have FPL, Verizon, like whatever you have to pay for your for your location. Right. You know. So without that overhead, you can just you know run your business stress free and know like you're keeping the majority of the money that's coming in every month without having to pay a landlord or whatever. Yeah. It's cool. How much of that do you think was a luck versus awareness and adapting and just being, you know, always top of mind. Okay. Maybe I should, I should go this route. Yeah. So now looking back at the time, I thought I was like, man, it's definitely like a lot of luck, but the reality is I had the idea of going mobile, even just with my car you know, loading up my car with some dumbbells and going before COVID happened. So I think that just having experience and and hard work and already having my clientele at the time, I mean, my following was already up to, you know, 70, 80,000 on Instagram. And like a lot of my leads were just coming from my Instagram channel. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't like my leads were just walking in the door at any time, you know, and if they were sometimes they're like, I saw Carlos, I saw he works here, you know, can you (laughs) book a preach? You know what I mean? So I knew I had, you know, everything that I needed to, to just go out on my own. Um, but yeah, I mean, timing is everything too, you know? So some of it was definitely hard work and perseverance and just all the years of like diligent marketing. You know I mean? I've been on Instagram since I was in seventh grade, mm-hmm. you know, um, just posting like videos of me bench pressing, you know, yeah. during football season or something like that, yeah. you know, um, without even realizing I was in seventh grade marketing already for my now, fitness franchise, right? you know, just not even aware, just right. doing it, you know? Right. Um, so it worked out, it worked out well, but yeah, I mean, I think luck and timing always has, you know, a role in yeah. everything that you do in life, yeah. you know? And executing on it, I think is the most important thing, right? Right. What about, um, with that, with all that said, how did you transition from, you know, being a, a fitness trainer to own now owning your business. Mm-hmm. And now you have to, now you're wearing a lot more hats yeah. and also you have to eventually start delegating to keep, continue to grow. What, what did you feel was a tough hurdle to get over or how did you manage all of that? Cause when you're a business owner, you're, you're wearing so many hats. <laughs> so how was that transition from fitness trainer to business owner? Detox the toughest transition. I mean, I always wanted to have like mentors, people that I could look up to people that I, I had in my circle that I could go to for advice with those things. But I, I did it because my family wasn't in that type of circle. You know, we were just around, you know, same thing. People that came from communism like us, right? People that came from Cuba or other Hispanics or, mm-hmm. you know, at the high school that I played, there was, you know, we had a lot of, uh, you know, Haitian kids and people from different, you know, ethnic back- backgrounds that, you know, none of them were running businesses or had parents that were running businesses or ran in those circles, mm-hmm. you know? Um, and so it was, it was a super tough transition. 
I have a lot of clarity now about it and I strive to teach our trainers that, you know, for example, our franchisee in West Palm, you know, he's an owner operator. He's a kid that came straight out of college. Him and his family bought into the franchise and they launched over there in West Palm. So right now he's in that owner operator stage, but you have to be able to then learn how to delegate, learn how to hire, learn how to be able to not just work in your business, but work on your business. I know a lot of people will like, you know, say that, but to do it is a completely different thing. Yeah. It takes 100% focus is the only thing that I can say. Um, I think that a lot of people end up like trying to dip their hands in too many baskets, you know, mm-hmm. like, uh, you know, you see young kids that are 21 that are trying to build a follow on social media, then they're part-time trainers, then they work at a restaurant and then they're also pushing supplement sales. And then they're also, you know, looking for the next AI boom to invest in crypto. They're doing too many things. Yeah. And I was a uh, culprit of that for a very long time. Um, but honestly, Versagym was like our saving grace with that because I've always been such a hustler and a hard worker that, you know, I felt like I could always take on that. Like I had no problem waking up at four thirty five AM and working until 10 at night. Like that to me was like just a normal day, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but then I realized when your attention is spread out in too many areas, you're never able to actually focus, right? And the person that's focusing on one thing for seven, eight, ten 10 hours a day is going to get much further than the person that's doing five things 12 or 15 hours a day. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like that person is still advancing their career in that particular field 10 hours a day where you're, you know, actually doing an hour and a half or two hours a day because you're spread out in five or six things. And not, not even to mention your energy levels and your focus starts diminishing as the day proceeds. Right. Right. So yeah, it's, there's a lot that goes into that. And, you know, we have the uh, trainers Academy now as well, the financially fit coaches. Mm-hmm. And with that man, it's just, it's awesome to be able to mentor some of these trainers. Um, it's so funny. We had um, a girl the other day that, you know, entered our free mastermind program and give all the trainers like a free 30 days into the program. We try to get them three to five new clients in those first 30 days. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if they want to sign up with us, they can, if they, if they don't want to, no harm, no foul. At least we know we did something good for the personal training community. Yeah. And this girl was in, in uh, med school and then she realized she wanted to take a different route. She wanted to do personal training. And so I have all these videos and notes of previous calls and with my, you know, on my first call with this lady, she literally had already reviewed every single video, every single note. Like she was like in med school still. And she was like, man, this is so simple. <laughs> and I was like, I'm glad you think so. Cause I really simplified the process. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I teach them everything, how to right. file an LLC, how to do everything. Right. You know? And then some of them already have established businesses that are making 40, 50, 60,000 a year or whatever. Yeah. Um, but some of them are, are brand new, mm-hmm. you know? And she's like, yeah, filing an LLC, I already did that. I was like, the first company uh, that I ever filed, the first LLC, I was like 20 years old and I paid a company like 400 bucks to file it for me. Uh, and I teach them how to file it just themselves. Yeah. On yeah. some biz.org or, you know, whatever state they're in, right. you know? But a lot of people don't know those things. Oh yeah. You know, just like when you file, like on some biz, you file an LLC, you get a bunch of paperwork, you know, uh, you, oh, you need um, this poster in your workplace or you need this, you know, people trying to scam you through mail, yes, yeah. you yes. know, or calling you trying to scam you through mail. Like you haven't paid your businesses that PL bill or whatever, just yeah, yeah. credit info. Yeah. Um, so I'm like, I'm glad that it's, it's simple for you because I went through the tough struggles of spending too much money or, you know, not knowing how to necessarily, you know, allocate my funds when I was a self-employed trainer to now I can teach you how to do those things. So you don't make the same mistakes that I did. And you can get from point A to point B a lot faster than I did. Right. You know, so they, they avoid hurdles and headaches right. by joining. Exactly. And you give them that 30, that 30 day free mm-hmm. trial. Right. Yeah. Um, man, that's awesome. And do you wish you had that when you were starting? Definitely. Definitely. And I will say the owner of the Anytime Fitness where I used to work at, he, um, definitely played a role in my development and I've always been very competitive. I mean, I come from that, you know, sports background. So we would always like sit down in the office and, you know, at the time that I came in, he was doing like 20,000 a month in personal training revenue. And I was like, darn, I was doing like four and I was like, I'm going to get there. And so like every month we'd like sit down, like, Hey, what'd you do? How many do you do? And then, you know, I yeah. just, just, uh, learning from them. 
You right. know, uh, even though he wasn't necessarily like giving me all the sauce, I could learn mm-hmm. just from seeing him do it. Mm-hmm. And just from our meetings, I would have all these questions that I wanted to ask him, right. you know? So we developed a, a great relationship. You know, he was one of my, uh, one of my, um, groomsmen mm-hmm. at my wedding as well. Oh, wow. Peter Farhidian, great guy, still owns it anytime. Um, and so, so yeah, just being able to learn, you know? Right. What do you, what do you think motivates you from, what do you think is that thing that, that's a big motivating factor for you that it sounds like you've had for a while since you were young? What do you think that is? And then what do you think that's evolved to? Yeah, I think it was just my family leaving Cuba, leaving everything they've ever known with no valuables, no possessions to come to America to give me a better future, Mm -hmm. you know? So I took that very seriously in school and sports, everything that I did, I wanted, I just wanted it more than the other kid. Right. That's just what it is, you know? Um, and that's the way that I view everything that I do in life for the most part. Um, and so, and, you know, ultimately realizing that you're your biggest competition, you know, the man in the mirror, you know, it's like, if you don't get up and work, you know, it doesn't get done. You know, another thing too, if you, there's any young kids listening to this that want to start their own businesses, uh, something that I always struggle with because I didn't have that circle of people that were in business, I would wonder, man, is it true? If I don't wake up at four 30 in the morning, I'm not going to be successful. Right. <laughs> and should I be working till 10 o'clock at night or whatever? And then now that I've started versus gym, I've had some really high net worth clients that have sold companies in the hundreds of millions of dollars. And I'll ask, I'll just ask them a question of it. Hey, what time do you start work when you were coming up? Nah, I never got in any earlier than eight 30, <laughs> you know, hmm. this, this guy sold two different companies, one in the one fifty range, 150 million, the other like two seventy nine. Yeah. you know, uh, an RV company and a boating company, mm-hmm. uh, boat sales and RV sales. And, um, then you get people that are like, yeah, you know, I always woke up at 445 and they also made millions. So it's like the work has to get done regardless. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you got to do the work no matter what. Like the work doesn't know if it's getting done at five or if it's getting done at 10 a.m. Right. So it's like mm-hmm. finding your groove, finding your motivation and like where you are going to do the best amount of like deep work, I think is the biggest, the biggest thing. So. And the, uh, the amount of hours that you work, does it make you like efficient, you know, at work in the sense of you can work so many hours, but if you're not efficient at work, then it just, it doesn't matter. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what I'm preaching to all these trainers now. Um, and usually like the younger that they are, the more they struggle with this, you know, and I was there. So I've, I've been through that where it's like, you don't have to, you know, divide your attention, to seven different things. I was like, look, there's this company that you're selling supplements for that's paying you a 3% commission. That's not even worth your time. When you could be selling, uh, you know, a fitness program, uh, either virtually or in person, you could be making a thousand, five hundred, fifteen hundred, three thousand off a sale, right? Like, and you keep a hundred percent of that, you know, because you're a business owner, you know. So being able just to redirect their attention, um, and yeah, I mean, there was many times where I thought I was working really hard, and I was technically, but I wasn't working efficiently. Mm-hmm. Is what you're just asking. But- you know, like you're working from, you know, five in the morning to 10 o'clock at night, you know, and it's like, you look back at your day, you're like, Hmm, what did I really get done today? Yes. Yeah, you know? That's yeah. what I was just thinking. Like, what did you really do in that time? Yeah. And especially when, especially when you start franchising, yeah. right? you, have, you have to start creating systems, delegating, uh, because most of the time when you're working so many hours is probably because there is a problem right. in delegating because sure. you're probably doing everything yourself. Um, so, so yeah, I think that's a big, big thing yeah. when it comes. Yeah. And then I think back like anything that I've ever accomplished, I look back now, you know, knowing what I know now. And I'm like, okay, during that time I accomplished this cause that's all I focused on. Mm-hmm. You know, like when we franchise, I had to write the franchise manual, you know, um, nobody knew the business better than me. Like I ran my own truck and trailer, you know? Um, so I knew what, what needed to happen on a daily, you know, weekly, monthly basis to get to that six figure mark. Right. I mean, now you have a business that generates six figures in revenue and has very little overhead, mm-hmm. right? Gas and tires, you know, and then whatever your truck payment is, mm-hmm. I mean, you're talking about a business that has no overhead. I mean, that doesn't exist. You know? Right. So, um, when I wrote it, I just had to get in a group. And so what I did is I used to wake up at five and from five to six, the only thing I let myself do, I didn't schedule any clients at five in the morning or five thirty or six. All I would do was just write, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I just found my group. And then sometimes I come home from work and I, I get inspired to write the manual. Boom, write the manual again within four to 
five months, I had the manual written out. And then we continued just to improve it mm -hmm. from there. But the basics that mm -hmm. got our Naples location to where we are now, you know, where we have multiple trailers, where we have a gym as well here in Naples that we created kind of into like a headquarters as well. Mm -hmm. All of that, because all that revenue just came from, from our Naples location, mm -hmm. you know. Um, that was just 100% focus. So. What's that? And I, I hope people are like kind of, you know, really listen to what you said about just sitting down for four to five months, writing that in four months you had it. Mm -hmm. It's hard to just sit down and work on the business like that. You know, you make, you made it sound super easy, right. but that's one of those things that a lot of people won't do because they feel like, Hey, I'm not being as productive as I can be mm -hmm. with the, uh, I don't know, training somebody or so on and so forth. Um, but just sitting down and taking that time, sometimes you really feel like, man, am I, should I, should I keep doing this? Is this really going to matter? But then you fast forward and you're like, Oh wow, those four months really did matter because now I have this opportunity to franchise or whatever the case may be. Um, what something that I wanted to ask you is what do you think, what does success look like to you? What do you, what do you think success is? Yeah. I think that's a ever evolving question. You know, that's something that if you would ask me when I was 21, it would have been, you know, an apartment and brick old downtown Miami and, <laughs> you know, a Lamborghini and all this nonsense, you know, and now like I just look forward to waking up on a Saturday or Sunday morning, just having family time, you know, knowing that I'm truly passionate about what I do. And I know that by me helping trainers, like I quickly realized, and this is one of the reasons that we franchise, like I quickly realized that, you know, with Versagem, our average clients, you know, they, uh, with Versagem, our average client pays about $1,200 a month. You know, sometimes they'll buy in bulk of, of, you know, quarterly packages. And I realized we have really high paying clients. So you only need to get to have a six figure business. You need 10 to 15 clients. If you're a hustler, you need 20 clients, but then you're, you're full, you know, that's it. You know, and a lot of these clients, I mean, you know, I've had clients that have been with me since the start, four years, you know, um, that have been paying the, that $1,200 mark. It was a little bit less when we first started, 800 to 1,000. Now we've upped it a little bit. And, you know, I quickly realized um, I, I can only help 20 people. I'm only one man. One person, 20 people is like a good yeah. solid. Well, right? one person, 15 is, is solid. Yeah, I mean, super solid. You know, I mean, you're, you're talking about. If you have 10 people paying 1200 bucks, that's $12,000 a month, mm -hmm. you know, in 10 months you're at 120, mm -hmm. you know? So, um, and that's really like the golden mark right now for us. Like we want every single location to be doing at least six figures right. um, with minimal overhead. So like the average gym owner in America takes home like 36,000 or $30,000 in profit mm -hmm. after expenses, you know? So if you're telling me, you know, you can net 125, you know, thousand, whatever, um, with 12 clients or whatnot. And, you know, after gas and tires or whatever, you take home 110, 105, mm -hmm. and you didn't have to pay a million bucks or half a million dollars to actually start the gym. You know, it's, it's becomes a lot more profitable, a lot faster, mm -hmm. you know? So, but I realized I'm only one man, you know, I can only train 10, 15, 20 people. Then I can do some stuff online. Um, but how do I really replicate this all over America for two reasons? One, personal trainers need good businesses to own that don't cost a million bucks to start. Because a lot of gym owners in America are, a lot of gym owners in America aren't um, trainers, you know, not all the time. A lot of them you see are investors or an investor group that owns the businesses, right? Like yeah. how do we get more personal trainers in America to actually be able to open their own fitness businesses, right? Um, with low overhead where they can keep a lot of that profit. Yeah. So that was one reason that we did it. And then two, you know, was all the clients that we service. I mean, we have people that, you know, are overweight, have confidence, confidence issues, or either just retired and don't want to go to the gym, the busy professionals that wouldn't have time to work out unless we come to them with a full functioning mobile gym, you know, like all these people that wouldn't necessarily make time or wouldn't have the capability to go to a regular gym. Now we're tapping into that market. And I never realized the power of like niching down. Right. And I didn't even realize that I niched down when I created Versagem because what happened was by pricing so high and saying, 
we're going to go all in on going to people's homes, not parking at a park, not, you know, doing corporate events, not any of that. You know, yeah. everyone was giving me all these ideas, do corporate events, do this, go to a taco stand, go here. And I'm like, dude, I'm focusing on going to people's homes by focusing on that and upping the prices to where we did. We, I didn't even realize we niched down. Yeah. We niched down and that became, you know, a very profitable, you know, business that we then franchised. Right. You know, so I tell every franchisee, I'm like the, the home personal training services, you can do group training at a park, you know, to fill in some time slots, but the, the home personal training business is always going to be your bread and butter. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And it's interesting, like with your franchise model, you're providing support for the franchisees, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're, you're providing that, that knowledge, you're providing all of that information to help them be successful. And with a franchise, are they like, without giving away too much, what is it, what does it look like for a franchisee? Um, like with your model, is it location based? Um, if, if someone's interested in doing a franchise, what are they kind of buying, so to speak, uh, a region, are they buying a zip code and like without having too much competition of the next franchisee, what does that look like? Yeah. So the way we structured it is, you know, by zip code, right. And so we price it out that way. We typically are doing right now. I mean, we're so early that we're doing like one Versa gym trailer per hundred thousand people. You know, so we try to find zip codes like that. And then, you know, people can, can buy additional zip codes if they want to as well. Um, so like our Bonita investors that started that location, that's actually our first investor owned location. Um, of course, Naples is as well investor owned, but that's me. I started as an owner operator. Mm -hmm. um, but our Bonito is technically our first investor owned franchise. So what we did is we had two um, really amazing ladies who were clients of my wife and they wanted to join the business. They wanted to franchise with us. And so what we did is we went out there in the community and just found her an amazing trainer to be their manager, right? So she's not just a trainer. She has to do with managing. So obviously she gets paid more than a, a regular trainer does, but the investors are, are hand off, hands off, you know, where it's a little bit more of a turnkey investment solution for them, mm -hmm. as opposed to like the investor actually like now having to go get certified and start, yeah. you know, hauling this trailer all over town. Right. You know, um, and so in this scenario worked out great. So it's three ladies that are running the show up in Bonita. Yeah. And it was really just a trickle down effect. I mean, they had the first best month that we've ever had in the company, including Naples. Oh, really? Because one, I had to offload some of my clients. So I gave them some of my clients and we got calls in Naples that I couldn't service. So then they got it too, mm -hmm. you know? So like instantly within like the first couple of weeks, they were already like, you know, $8,500 in, in, you know, wow. in sales, yeah. you know, within the first couple of weeks, which again, $8,500 when you're looking at like a gym, doesn't sound like that much, but when you're keeping, you know, 90% of the profit, right. you know, because they, we charge a 10% royalty fee. So when you're keeping a, you know, 90% of the profit, right? It's a lot better than, oh, yeah. you know, $8,500, but you have an $8,000 lease payment, you know, you just, you got $500 of profit. Yeah. You know? <laughs> with, with, your, so go ahead. with your franchise, like if someone franchises it, is it one trainer per franchise or can you have multiple trainers yeah. in a franchise? Yeah, you can have multiple, you can have multiple, you know, so here in Naples, we've had up to three trailers working at once. You know, my wife manning one, I was manning another one, and then we hired a third trainer during season. So we had three trucks, three trailers, just hauling all over town. So uh, yeah, you can have as many as you want. Like you can buy, you know, you can buy a franchise right now up in Fort Myers and, you know, get the Fort Myers Beach zip code per se. And you can have, you know, however many trailers in that Fort Myers Beach area as you want. And right now, because we're so early, we let our franchisees operate in any zip code as long as nobody else owns it. So like if you buy the Fort Myers Beach, you know, zip code, you can operate, you know, anywhere in Fort Myers, even in Estero, because we don't have a franchise in Estero. We just ask, hey, don't come to the Bonita zip code right. that our Bonita franchisees own you right. know, for the most part. And even then, like I own the Naples zip code, technically, like all the zip codes in Naples. And so I still let them, you know, come in because I'm full and I yeah. have no interest in continuing to further my schedule because I have to, you know, I'm looking to give clients away, not get, so yeah. I can keep building the business. So are you, are you still taking on, are you still actually training clients? Like yeah, very, very few. Was it difficult people being like, no, I want to train with Carlos because you know, like that's who I started with or that's the best trainer. How, how difficult is that to, 
to let clients know like, Hey, how, how do you navigate that? Yeah. I think that, um, I really went about it the right way. I think it'd be a lot more difficult to like just send a trainer to someone's house that, and they didn't even know it was showing up or just texting them before they arrive. I think that's not the way to go about it. I mean, they've been working with you. They're comfortable with you for the last three years. So a couple seasons ago, I hired a trainer. And what I do with every trainer, especially it's my franchise here in Naples, it's my reputation. Mm -hmm. And so what I do is they, sh they shadow me for a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. So they're in the truck and trailer learning how to drive because you have to know how to back up the trailer. It's a whole thing, right? So they're just getting paid hourly at this point and they're, you know, driving the truck and trailer with me uh, on a daily basis for the next two weeks. And then, so all the clients meet them. You know, and like a couple days in there, I'll have them train the clients and I'm like shadowing mm -hmm. until I'll tell the clients I'm doing like a performance review yeah. uh, for the trainer. So they're already, they've already gotten trained by the trainer by the time that I try to offload them, you know, um, and the clients, you know, they're super supportive because they know where we started. We started with a really little trailer, like in the middle of COVID. Now we have a franchise, mm -hmm. you know, like I've told my clients that have had meetings in Palm beach, like, Hey, I can have my West Palm guy, you know, pull up to your hotel and train you, yeah. you know, and they're like, really, you know, and that's, that's something super cool, right? right. Where we're looking to keep building that network. Like you get 5,000 versus gyms out there. Yeah. Odds are, you know, I have a client here, you know, Bill, and he has a meeting up in, you know, wherever Georgia, and we can get a trailer over there. That's, that's huge. You start building that network. right? Oh yeah. So, Do you have an app or anything like that yeah. yet? Yeah. So on the app store, you can find versus gym app. Um, and that's pretty much, that's the client app. What we're actually building out right now is our business suite. Um, so the business suite is just going to be like an all in one for business. Mm -hmm. And basically instead of having to connect like your MailChimp to like your Stripe payments to like, you know, slick text for SMS marketing to Instagram, to Facebook, to all these things, you can connect everything to this one platform and you can see all inbound leads from Instagram, Facebook, all of these things, all in the one platform. Um, and the software company that builds that out, we can actually just brand it Versagen. And so we'll have, you know, a more turnkey solution by the time that that's done. And that's actually one of my major projects that I'm working on right now. So, you know, I can go to an investor and say, Hey, if you buy our franchise, there's only two things you need to run this business. You need the uh, Versa business suite and you need the Versagen client app. That's it. And the client app, you know, you can all, you can upload workout programs, meal plans, you know, uh, weight liability waivers, um, you know, whatever you want, client, client, um, trainer interactions. There's a lot of things you can do on the first gym app. So how many, uh, how many franchises do you have right now? So right now we have four, four franchises. Four. Yeah. How, how much does it cost? 150, I think. 150? Yeah, anywhere between 135 and 165. And with franchising, the costs are always different because, like, if I get like a really good trainer interested in buying a franchise in, you know, Texas, and they already have like a black Ford F-150 that matches our specs, like right now we're really trying to keep it mostly to Ford and Chevys. Mm -hmm. and they have to be 2019 or newer, 50,000 miles or less. Like if they already have one of those trucks, they need to buy one. You know, so like their costs to launch a franchise is a lot lower than someone, you know, that needs to buy a truck and needs to get the Versa Gym trailer and all the equipment. And then also the reason for the range too is, you know, um, these trailers, they're shipped from Reno, Nevada. So like if, you know, you're looking to ship the trailer to, you know, somewhere in California, it's going to be a lot che cheaper than if I'm looking to, you know, ship it to Naples, Florida, it's a lot more expensive, right? So there's always variable costs when it comes to the franchise and that's every business too, you know? So. Mm -hmm. What's the goal on how many franchise franchises models you, or no franchises you want across the States? Yeah. It's so funny because like, as soon as we launched the franchise, we were instantly like, we're going to sell 13 this year. <clears throat> and then looking back now at like, one, we were super disappointed when it didn't happen. Yeah. Um, but now I know why it didn't happen. And also too, I'm kind of glad because I'm like, I've had so <laughs> many, well, just like fires that you have to put out oh, yeah. you know, the first franchisees. Yeah. You know, that you're like, now you're going to learn a system just right. for that. Cause like right. you made the manual and then now yeah. you have to create the system for having the franchisee, make sure they have everything they need. Like now you're building that cool app, yeah. you know? So now you're in that whole phase of working on the business. Exactly. Exactly. And I think like really that's going to take us to the next level of like, if you really want to be a fitness franchise in America that has 500, a thousand plus locations, you have to have a very turnkey 
business solution. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it just, if you want to get there, you can have 10 locations, 20 locations. Yeah. Like I might find 10, 20 trainers that are super motivated. that just want to be owner operators mm-hmm. that I can help finance this or whatever to them. And then they can launch it. Right. Um, but in terms of having 500 or a thousand locations, that's where investors get involved and to be able to wow those investors as like, okay, why is Versagen, you know, a good business model for me to invest in? Why should I own five Versagen locations? Yeah. It's like, well, literally, you know, this is why, right? right? So we're building those systems out, you know, and just little by little taking it one day at a time. And like my focus is very narrow. It's just Versagen and the financially fit coaches. That's it. Um, you know, I'm always going to have two or three clients, um, that some of those clients I work out with myself, you know, and they're in the business world. So like I can pick their brains about things. They ask me how the brand's doing and I can keep on, you know, I'm in that circle. You know, we just created, I met David, you know, we just created a, a wellness networking event here in Naples at Bartulia. We partnered with the owner there, uh, Vincenzo. Mm-hmm. Um, so if that goes well, which it has been, it's been like 20 to 30 people every time that we've done it. We've only done it twice. It's the first Tuesday of every month, um, 6 to 8 p.m. And uh, if it goes well, we're talking about maybe opening it up on Fifth Ave as well at the Bar Tuli over there. But maybe do, just do like just strictly business mm-hmm. over there and then just do a wellness networking here in Mercado at the Bar Tuli. So. Yeah, I love that, man. Yeah. So so if you, if you have an investor and he wants to open a location, who finds the trainer? And does the trainer, sorry, does the trainer become their partner once you find it or their employee? Yeah. So we have all sorts of different options. So yeah, we find the trainer for them. So for example, for our investors in Bonita, we went out and I interviewed, well, I pre-screened probably like 15 to 20 trainers. Wow. So a pre-screen, pre-screen is just like, if we put out an ad that we're hiring a trainer for Versagen and they fill out the application, I'll quickly give them a call or somebody on the team will quickly give them a call. Just ask them just a few questions. And if they answer those questions correctly, then we move on to an interview. And those interviews would be with, with the direct leadership team for Versagen. And once they talk to us, then we do an interview with the owners. So it was a pretty long process where we didn't want to waste the investor's time. Mm-hmm. And even though it's like our first investors and it was like one of the first businesses that they own and they're younger, like we didn't want to take advantage of that by like wasting their time or like, let's build up the processes and the systems like correctly, like starting now, mm-hmm. you know? So we didn't bother them. So they only interviewed three trainers. I called 15 yeah. of them. <laughs> you know, I had eight interviews with trainers, but only three made it right. to, to them. You know, we have one that didn't show up. They uh, they wanted to interview four of them. We have one that didn't show up um, and then called us back to schedule again. Like, no, mm-hmm. you know, no call, no show, it's not happening. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's been great, man. Just a great learning experience, Yeah, you know? And you know, ultimately just working hard on it and knowing like, if you really create something for the marketplace, that's that turnkey solution that's valuable to society, it's gonna grow. Right. Like people are just going to hear about it. Like it, it's going to grow if you, if you're able to, to do those things. And if it doesn't take off, then, you know, you didn't create enough value for the marketplace. That's the way I see it. Yeah. So with Gonzalez's question, you know, um, is that support that you're offering to any investors that you guys will take on the hiring and the searching for those trainers? Correct. Okay. Yeah, correct. So we'll, we'll hire the trainer and then we have um, a 50 hour training program. So every trainer, whether you're an owner operator, um, or just a managing trainer, right? So if you work for an owner, like that's an investor, um, every trainer gets a 50 hour training program and that's included in the franchising cost. So they either fly or drive here to Naples, Florida. We put them up at a hotel, um, again, all included in the cost. And then they literally just, they go out with me. I have a bunch of presentations, kind of how I train my coaches, uh, for the FFC, for the financially fit coaches, and also teaching them how to drive, how to hook on the trailer, how to unhook the trailer, all those other things as well, you know, just getting them prepared. That way, when they do start business, they're ready to hit the ground running, you know? Right. Do you, through the franchise model, is insurance through that, or does each franchisee have to get their own special insurance, you know, their own insurance for the... Yeah, so we have insurance requirements for every single franchise that they have to adhere to, um, which is it's really nice having a franchise because you can kind of control those things. So, like, if you know, like, for example, like a, a standard trainer would sometimes cut costs when it comes to that. 
just to kind of nickel and dime. But like with us, it's like, this is the insurance you're required to have. You know, we check up and make sure that their policy is active year round. Um, and then ultimately, you know, they got to start talking to you if they don't, you know, and it's really just to protect them. Like mm -hmm. God forbid, like you get into a crash, you know, and you lose like your equipment, like 60, $70,000 worth of equipment just went out the window. Like that will bankrupt some businesses. You know what I mean? So it's like, how are you going to train your clients now? Yeah. Right. So, you know, having those things in order, right. Where like some independent contractors, sole proprietors, you know, uh, people that are self-employed, you know, they don't understand those things with a franchise. We're literally just limiting those obstacles because we know what works. Like we're doing it in Naples. Like it works in Naples. We are replicating it in Texas. We can replicate it. We feel that we can replicate it in a lot of places. But there is always someone that wants to come and change things, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think I think you 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 know that comes with the territory. That's life, you know. But yeah. I think that you start to like mitigate that with like the investment. Like if someone's paying one hundred and fifty thousand dollars to start a business, mm -hmm. like they don't want to like you know step on your toes like they know like the reason they invested in this instead of just like buying a truck or whatever and just loading equipment on the truck and doing it themselves yeah is because they love your business model they know they can learn from you mm -hmm. you know um so that's great how, how important is money to you money Again, you asked me at 20, 21, I was like, yeah, money's like insanely, insanely important. Um, I think money to me right now at 27, where I'm at in my life, is important for several reasons. One, like you're not very good at business if you don't have any money. You know, um, the way you use that money though is completely different. Like it's not, you know, how much money you make per year that defines you. I think, uh, you know, coming up again in that lower middle class, uh, family, a lot of times you felt like your, your net, your net worth was your net, like your, your self worth mm -hmm. to say, you know, like your net worth was your self worth. And I think that, um, in life you, you shouldn't view yourself that way. Like you, you need to view yourself for just the type of person that you are. Like, what are you trying to do in your life? Like, are you a good person? You know, basically, yeah. um, so money's not, you know, everything in life, I wouldn't say, but again, if you love the game of business, if you love business and you want to, you know, build something, you have to be able to make money. Like yeah. nobody ever said like, you're really good at business to someone who was like, you know, bro, yeah. you know, for the most part, <laughs> yeah. like Jeff Bezos, yeah, he ain't bro. You know, right. um, people who have really disrupted spaces have, you know, created a lot of value in a particular space. Mm -hmm. Are all rich, yeah, you know, and it just comes with the territory. Uh, do you think money buys happiness? Shoot, uh, a lot of times I wouldn't, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't deny that. I mean, I think that you know, if you can't pay your bills, you can't pay your rent, you know, you're worried about you know, paying all these things that you have to pay. It's like, you yeah. know, how are you gonna be able to? to be happy. How are you going to be able to focus on your marriage mm -hmm. when you're so worried about paying your rent? Like, how are you going to be able to focus on spending time with your kids when you're working on a Saturday and a Sunday, mm -hmm. you know, and that's to be able to pay your, your stuff, you know? Yeah. So to a, to a point, um, do I think there's people that live just straight through vanity? Yeah. In today's day and age. Um, I mean, Instagram's just a highlight reel. Like, yeah. A lot of people are just front and flexing on Instagram. So that's to be said. Anyone that doesn't know that these days, it's, you yeah. know, they're going to be lost just chasing that. You know, um, you, um, isn't it crazy that like we've all heard before money doesn't buy happiness? Like, that, that's, over, the, that's what I was going to ask. Like, it's yeah. so mainstreamed that you really believe it, right? But it does. Yeah. I mean, you, I mean, are, sorry, you, are you happy? <laughs> yeah, I'm extremely happy. Yeah. So, so the reason I ask is because like people say that money's not like we interview a lot of people and, and sometimes they say money's not important. Yep. Or I don't do this for the money. Sure. So we're always like after the interviews, like almost like, so why else will you do it? If you yeah. why why else will you get in business? You know, mm -hmm. um, yes, bring value, be a good person, but that's off the category of making money. You know, so in order for you to help people, I think that when you're happy and 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 you create value for people, the more money you have, the more people you can help. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I look at, um, so one of my first years, like my first year of business, I, I paid way too much money in taxes, um, because I had never made that much money before. So I just made an error. Now I teach my trainers, hire a good accountant, 
don't let you know the IRS take all your money. Um, things such as like some of that money could have gone to my church. You know, I go to Naples Church here in Naples. I mean, we got married there. You know, we had a beautiful you know country club, the, the vineyards that had just gotten renovated during COVID, where we got married. Um, and you know, it was straight all off our pockets. We didn't have any help. You know, like our parents don't come from money. Like we didn't have help you know, to do everything. So it was really special for us. So like, that's not buying happiness right there. Mm -hmm. You know, like I got married, yeah. we were already happy before we were married. If not, I would have married her. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but you're telling me like me being able to like wake up like on the day of my wedding and like put on my suit, you know, that I worked hard to buy and like put on my, you know, go to this beautiful venue and like the vineyards, like, dude, my parents got married in the back of an alley in Cuba. Yeah. You know, like I'm in the freaking vineyards, country club or natives. Yeah. Who am I? Yeah. You know, like that you paid for. Dude. Yeah. Kids <laughs> my age that I grew up with in Cuba that I used to run around on the street, you know, ride tricycles in Cuba or whatever. Like I go back to Cuba now and you know, they're living in homes that have, you know, half the, the roof is gone. Yeah. You know, so like, we were just talking about this. Yeah. Cause today. we visited Peru um, mm -hmm. last year and um, it's, it's just, it's a like shock. It's right. like, totally different i mean it's a third world country and if you've never been there you just don't understand but like there's just walls missing but people live there yes. you know it's crazy <laughs> yeah. so in that case like yeah money does buy happiness yeah like, mm -hmm. i was super happy that day because i know like i was able to give my wife right my soon to be wife that day right um that wedding that she like grew up like wanting as like a little girl you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. um and so that for me was was special it wasn't because oh i got to flex to all my friends like right. that we invited like oh you know look at this country club i'm getting married at. it wasn't about that it was it's never about other people when you do things for other people you instantly go off the path mm -hmm. you know when you do things from the inside out like the reason i want to save money on my taxes is not like because i want to go buy you know a motorcycle or something like i want to save money on my tax i want to be able to you know donate to my church mm -hmm. You know, I want to be able to take my family on an extra vacation. Like, I want to be able to do things, you know, that I care about, mm -hmm. um, you know, causes that I believe in. Right. And so in that instance, like, I'm happy. Yeah. You know, I did the right thing, the smart thing, you know, uh, that took work so that I can, you know, be happy about my decisions and the people I'm able to help with that money. So. And it's interesting. You know what brings you happiness. Mm -hmm. You know your priorities or your values, what, what you desire, and that's what you're spending your money on. Sure. Right? You're not spending your money on what people are telling you to or mm -hmm. where you know, you're not trying to please people. You already have an idea of what brings you happiness. And so money does buy happiness in that sense that you're spending it on the things that you enjoy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. That for me is my family, you know, the church that I attend and you know, just my parents, man, you know, my parents, did, you know, they sacrificed everything so I can, you know, come to America and chase the American dream. And that's what I'm going to do every single day. And I, I fall in love with the game of business and, you know, it's, it's only up from here. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that, man. I love it. Yeah. I, I wanted to touch on that a little bit because I, I feel like you see so many things trend on social mm -hmm. that is just bullshit and it doesn't, it's not true. You know what I mean? Um, like business is easy, yeah. go into business, exit, <laughs> exit in one year, you know, like, uh, money doesn't buy happiness. I, I feel like if you have your good core values and, uh, you know, in place, then money, why else would you go out of your house every single day and spend more time mm. with other people than you do your partner or your family for the majority of people, right? Mm. Um, so I think that idea of like, yeah, money doesn't, it almost, it's almost like put there like to not, don't chase money. But when you do, you're usually bringing value to people, you know, yeah. like what you guys are doing, you know, like at Versa with financially fit coaches. Is that something that you guys talk a little bit about with the coaches? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, we all have different perspectives. We all have different upbringings, you know, like for my wife, you know, being able to spend time with her son, you know, being time to, you know, cook meals for me, like as funny as it sounds like we're in 2023 where we have super massively successful women, like that's what brings my wife like joy, just being able to like, cater to her boys and now soon to be, you know, new baby boy uh, in February, God willing. And, uh, you know, we all have different perspectives and different things that, that bring us joy, but I think definitely never chase money. Mm -hmm. When you chase money, you never attain it, you never attract it. You know, like we live in a day and age and I tell my trainers this all the time. I tell them, 
constantly people are getting email blasts for marketing, constantly Instagram ads, Facebook ads, um, you know, cold uh, calls, right, to people's phones. And so we live in a day and age where uh, attention span is very limited. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, people see right through the BS. Like consumer trust is at an all time low. Like in the 1920s, 1930s, you know, I could sell this remote right here and I could walk around from door to door selling this remote. And as long as, you know, I didn't have a bunch of tattoos that looked like I was in prison, I could go to your house, David, and I could open, you know, knock on the door. You'd come out and be like, David, this is the best remote control that you're ever going to see in your entire life. All your neighbors already have this remote control. I'll show you how to use it, David. If you want this, I can come, I can give it to you right now, David. I'll come back tomorrow. Let's shake hands. You can pay me five bucks tomorrow. And that's how people used to do business in the 20s and 30s, yeah. right? Because consumer trust was super high, right? You didn't have all these ads constantly bombarding you, mm -hmm. right? And so I teach my trainers that, and I'm like, that doesn't work anymore. You know, if all you go on Instagram is to post a call to action, you know, like a swipe up link, you're never going to convert on that swipe up link. Like you need to be, you know, providing value, mm -hmm. whether through a podcast, through, uh, you know, your Instagram post, Facebook post, right? Like you need to build yourself up as an expert in that area that, that you do, um, in order to, to get more sales yeah. or more organically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is like, if you know, service or product that you provide solves a problem for someone, like, why don't you give it to them for free? That's what I'm doing with the financially fit coaches. I'm like, okay, work with me for free. And in like 30 days, I completely changed their entire mindset on business and being a trainer. You know, you know, I have trainers that like, hey, I just closed a three thousand dollar sale, thirty six hundred dollar sale, and they've never even had a sales call before, yeah. right? Or they, you know, the highest package they've ever sold was like a four five hundred dollar package. Now they sold a thirty six hundred dollar package with the advice that I gave them, yeah. and I haven't even charged them a dime yet. Right. So now they're like, if this guy can do this for me in 30 days, what can he do for me in a year? Right. And I'm completely transparent. Like I give them financial statements from the company, like what I've done in my own personal. Cause a lot of times, man, it's like what you're saying right now, like, you know, you get all these people like, Hey, exit in a year, do this, do that. And it's completely disgusting, Yeah. you know, because they're painting this picture and all it is is clickbait. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's just a more refined version of click, clickbait because yeah. they're giving you like a whole blueprint in 30 seconds in a short reel of how to do it as opposed to like a YouTube clickbait, you know, used to be just a thumbnail yeah. right now on Instagram, they're doing the same thing, but they're just giving you like a quick 30 second, you know, synopsis to make you think it's easy, mm -hmm. but it's not. Cause then in that one little part of the video where he's like, well, you gotta go make a website and it takes you, you know, 25 hours to make a website. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. It's not just like a, yeah. it's not super easy how they're saying it is. Um, so I, it's super annoying to, to see those things on, on, uh, online. And it's just, again, it just goes back to like that clickbait, right? right? But the reality is it takes time. It takes work. And a lot of people are like, man, like, what can I accomplish today? Instead of like, man, you need to accomplish in two years, mm -hmm. you know, like what can you accomplish in two years if you actually stay consistent? Right. Cause when people set those short term goals and they don't see those goals, like come to fruition, like accomplishments then they get super demotivated and then in two years they accomplish a lot less because they're they're very unmotivated unfulfilled mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. all right carlos so i'm gonna ask you some uh rapid fire questions just to wrap it up these are pretty random <clears throat> but all right so what digital or software tools do you use daily to make your life easier yeah i mean i use slack that's what we're doing all the financial fit, fit coaches stuff um, is a Slack, the Slack app and I have like the free 30 day Slack app, um, channel. And then I have, um, like a, the platinum FFC members channel as well. So it's been very helpful for us because we can connect to zoom. So that's one. And then trainerize, um, which is like the white label version of our Versagem app. So like if you Google verse, um, if you go on the app store and you look up Versagem, it just, it's all Versagem. It doesn't say trainerize. You download it. It's all Versagem colors. But the company that made that app for us was Trainerize, which is by far the best company in the market right now. iPhone or Android? Oh, iPhone. <laughs> if you can only eat one thing for the rest of your life, what would it be? Ooh. Either steak or lobster, probably steak. Mm. Winter or summer? In Florida, winter yeah. all day. <laughs> <laughs> winter all day, you know? Uh, what is your favorite holiday? Ooh. I think Christmas. 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 Time of giving. Beach or pool? Pool all day. Fifth Ave or Mercado? 
Uh, I'm going to say Mercado because I live across the street. <laughs> <laughs> if you can only work two hours a week, what would you do in those two hours? Mm-hmm. Only work two hours a week. I would probably do um, Zoom calls with uh, financially fit coaches for one hour, and then the, one, the other one hour do like a group call for all versions of franchisees. Mm-hmm. If you could have lunch with anyone dead or alive, who would it be? Oh, that's crazy. Dead or alive? Mm-hmm. Tag me too. So yeah. if it's someone that's, well, Jesus for sure. I would definitely like the biggest mm-hmm. brain. I mean, he's one of the most influential people like of all time. <laughs> you know, so definitely like Jesus Christ for sure. Um, alive? But it'd probably have to be like Bezos. Bezos? Oh, yeah. yeah. What's your favorite restaurant in Naples? Hmm. So many good ones. Yeah. So many good ones. There's some good ones. Damn. That's a tough one. You put them on the spot. <laughs> restaurant owners. It, yeah. Uh, you want to skip it? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Let's go. <laughs> when, you, when you think of the word successful, who comes to mind? Harmozy. If you can choose any other career path, what would it be? I don't know. I wouldn't be able to. Like, I'm just so wrapped up in what I do. Like, that's all I think about. You know, all I've ever thought about. Like, I used to walk around in high school with, you know, people used to ask me, "What are you gonna do?" You know, like, you know, senior year or whatever. I'm gonna own a gym. I just tell people I'm gonna own a gym, and then I like realized what gym owners do, and I was like, I'm not gonna. Own a gym. You know, um, but fitness is all I've ever thought about. And now that vision just keeps evolving Mm -hmm. into the next thing, right? Like right now for me, it's like, what can I do? What is my highest leverage skill set? Right. And it used to be, you know, generating a hundred or $200,000 a year in personal training revenue. Well, now it's like, okay, well to do that, I have to work, you know, 50 hour weeks, personal training in the field. Um, but now I can replicate business models in the fitness industry. And that's my highest leverage skill. Right? Mm-hmm. I've acquired that skill, right? So what I was going to say earlier about the coaching, right? About people just saying you can accomplish things in 30 days or whatever is whenever you're going to hire anyone, accountant, business coach, business mentor, a mastermind, whatever you're going to do, one, make sure the person has actually done it. There's a lot of people online selling digital marketing packages and they have 500, 500 followers, mm-hmm. you know? So make sure the person has actually done what they say they're going to do for you. Mm-hmm. And then two, cause they can be an excellent trainer, but also make sure they're able to educate you and bring you with them. Right. Because you can be an amazing trainer that makes $250,000 a year or whatever, you know, but you might not know how to teach an up and coming trainer to reach where you're at. Cause you just got there just through your personality and hard work or whatnot, but you don't actually know the systems and the processes that took you there. You just, you worked hard, you met the right people, they paid you, you were decent at sales and now you're making 250 grand, mm-hmm. you know, like make sure you can actually bring people with you. And that was like our, our franchise. I learned how to start bringing people with me. And now we created the FFC for all the other trainers. So, right. What's been your best investment? My best investment, mm-hmm. you know, betting on myself, mm-hmm. You know, betting on myself when all, you know, kids in college were buying crypto, buying Bitcoin and stuff. I sold all my Bitcoin. I had some Bitcoin at the time um, and I just put it into my self-development, you know, going to different seminars, reading books, um, you know, not being afraid to invest in like my own well-being, right? Whether that was like just making sure I kept up with my fitness, um, eating the right foods, not like always going through drive throughs and fast foods like kids in college were doing, mm-hmm. not spending it all on tattoos and different things, like making sure that I was investing back into my self-development, you know, because I realized early on, like, man, one, I don't have all this college debt that a lot of these kids came out with, right? So that was like one of my first things that I was viewing that I was doing different that set me up for success. Um, and just continuing just to, to, you know, pour back into myself with my investments. So what's a bad piece of advice you've heard people telling others? Mm. A lot, <laughs> a lot. Oof, so much money doesn't buy happiness. Mm. Money doesn't buy happiness. <laughs> one of the worst ones I've ever heard, you know, for sure. I like that. Let's go with that. Yeah. <laughs> That's a hard All right. piece of listening. All right, man. Well, we definitely should do a part two eventually. Sure. Um, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Sure. And um, yeah, man. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.